Hey friends, welcome to Boca, a podcast exploring the ever blurring lines between the personal and business lives of professional photographers. This is your host, Nathan Holritz, and I'm bringing you a special episode of the Boca podcast today called Workflow Wednesday. During these special edition episodes, myself and my co-hosts will focus on helping you develop more efficient daily and weekly workflows around post-production, communication, task and project management, time management, file and image management, and yes, the list does go on. We're going to save you an incredible amount of time in your work week, and we promise not to be too nerdy. This podcast is brought to you by Photographer's Edit, custom image editing for the wedding and portrait photographer. Visit photographersedit.com. All right, we are officially live, um, at, at least trying to be. Um, <laughs> welcome, everybody, today to, to uh, Workflow Wednesday. This is your host, Nathan Holritz, and, um, and I'm here with my friends, Rich and Heather Smith and Haley Gaffin. Thank you guys for hanging out for a bit today. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, excuse the, the few minute delay. We had a little bit of a technical issue getting started, and hopefully we won't have any further technical issues. I'm looking out my, my window here, and uh, it's pouring down rain currently, and there was a bit of thunder earlier, so hopefully we won't um, have any power issues. Speaking of power, I actually have a light on me today because it's so dark in here. So um, had had to kind of make some adjustments on the fly, which is quite fitting for the topic that we're going to dive into today. Um, for those of you who have not listened to Workflow Wednesday before, you're kind of new to the scene. Um, this is a, a special episode that we do for the Boca podcast, uh, as well as for um, uh, Facebook, the Photographer's Edit Facebook page, where we actually go live and video on Wednesdays, talking specifically about workflow. Um, photographers, day in and day out, are involved in workflow in some form or fashion. And what we're trying to do is help you be a little bit more efficient with that workflow so that uh, you can spend less time working, more time doing other things that are ultimately more important in your life. And so that's kind of our goal. That's certainly what we do with Photographers Edit and offering editing services. And we want to take it a step further with this series. And today we're going to actually be talking about the uh, photographing a wedding. Last week, it was actually a really, really great show. Thanks to uh, Rich and Heather and Haley. Um, I think we all had some, some great information to kind of throw into the mix. But um, last week, we talked about preparation for photographing a wedding day and um, helpful information for both new photographers and uh, veteran photographers alike. And this week, we're going to actually talk more specifically about photographing the wedding day and to that point, uh, how to minimize the amount of stress and ultimately work more efficiently on a wedding day as a photographer. So again, this is going to be helpful for new photographers as well as uh, potentially for veteran photographers. And if we do have uh, any veteran photographers listening in, don't hesitate to chime in. I've, we already have uh, Casey Jeans chimed in. She says, hey, from sunny Santa Barbara. Very, very Whoa. jealous what of West that Coast. sun right now. <laughs> We're going to pause this and go to sunny, sunny Santa Barbara. Yeah, Maybe seriously. That? Yeah, wait, kind of cue us in there, Casey. We're, we're, we'll, um, we'd like to see some of that sun. We need some of that out here. But yeah. uh, the weather in Chattanooga has been all over the place as of late. And um, we had a little bit of sun there for a couple of days, and now the rain is back. So, Yay. But we're going to be talking about how to photograph a wedding day more efficiently, minimize stress as a result. Maybe we'll even talk about how to deal with weather uh, surprise weather mm -hmm. situations as well uh, on the wedding day. This is something that uh, I can comment on a little bit as well. Mackenzie says hello. Hey, Mackenzie, thanks for joining hey, Mackenzie. in. Hey, Mackenzie. Good to see you. Um, and and to uh, my, I began to make this point a second ago, but don't hesitate to chime in if you're if you're listening in. Uh, make sure to come back to Facebook.com/slash Photogs Edit to join us on Wednesdays. You can actually. Uh, comment in or ask questions with regards to the topic that we're discussing. Again, that's facebook.com slash photogs edit for those of you listening on the podcast, uh, which we normally push out on Wednesday evenings. And then for those of you watching live, if you want to go back and, and watch, of course, you can do that. You can also listen on the Boca podcast. And if you just go to bocapodcast.com or to uh, Instagram or Facebook, Boca podcast, B-O-K-E-H-P-O-D-C-A-S-T, uh, you can listen in to the episode. Uh, enough of the um, the formalities, I think, at this point. Let's just jump into well, – actually, I, I want to catch up with you guys. We haven't talked for a little bit, um, a little bit here here and there on and off via text, and, and uh, I got to see Rich and Heather uh, just a few days ago. But how has this week been so far? 
<laughs> Heather, Rich, yeah, Heather, Heather. <laughs> I guess I should have been more specific there. Rich and Heather, let's go to you first. There you go. Okay, all right. Balls in our court. Uh, yeah, it's going great. It's We're going, going well. Yeah, um, yeah. We had a uh, awesome hike with you last weekend. That was so cool. Going to Lula Lake up on Lookout Mountain, oh gorgeous hike. Uh, it was. It was. Yeah, our week has been a little less physically active than that. We've been sitting around and uh, you know catching up a little bit on some work and yeah. Well, he- so- Heather, Heather actually um, homeschools um, our yeah. kids, and so uh, and so homeschool actually started on Monday and yeah. uh, yeah. is going is going great. So, mm-hmm. uh, um, but. Talk about e- efficient workflows. Talking about how we having to really, really make your workflow really, really efficient. Now we have even less time because of yeah. school. Mm-hmm. So uh, the the importance of of this of of like just constantly being aware of how to make things a little bit more mainstream, make it more mm-hmm. more uh, efficient. Is mm-hmm. uh, we're all you know all about that, so we can have more time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's true. I mean, it, especially for those photographers who have uh, families, more specifically kids, mm-hmm. and those who are starting back to school. Oh, My yeah. kids um, technically start back this week as well. They're actually out of town at the moment on vacation, but. Um, they'll be getting back in town here in a few days and, and be starting back to school as well. So it's early mornings again, which I actually don't mind. I'm, I'm glad to get back into a little bit more consistent routine, mm-hmm. uh, earlier start to the day, get things done earlier in the day. But um, you also have to make the best possible use of the time that you have when you've got kids around or Haley dogs or cats around. I know, right? I know, I know. All right. <laughs> you got to keep them on a schedule, you know. <laughs> So Haley, it is Haley, if you spend your mornings homeschooling your dogs and cats, I'm going to be concerned. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be so I don't do that. Okay, good. Da- Dasha said, hey, thank hey. you for so Tasha. hanging out TK. with us for a little bit. Tasha, yeah, TK, we'll, we'll go with the, uh, the fancy the nickname. name. The nickname. Yeah. But um, we're going to be talking about photographing a wedding today. And, and again, photographing a wedding as efficiently as possible, which means, of course, ultimately minimizing stress. Photographing a wedding day, lots of different moving parts. And mm-hmm. um, and so to that point, I guess what I'd love to do is just kind of, hey, you know what, let's do, let's mix things up. Let's be really crazy and outside the box. Let's go to Haley first. And Haley, what? I didn't get a chance to hear about your week thus far. How has it been going for you? And then and then kind of start us off with um, with this topic. Yeah, so not much has gone on this week other than one of the worst workflow mess ups ever my command key doesn't work on my keyboard so i don't have any shortcuts <laughs> well the the right hand one does but no one ever uses that one so i'm taking yeah. it to get it fixed so nice. not a great we haven't really talked about keyboard shortcuts a whole lot on on workflow wednesday maybe we need to do a whole whole series on that because i'm sure we could all share some that are that are particularly effective and helping cut down the amount of time that we spend on our computers but mm-hmm. um yeah that command key on uh, on a mac computer assuming you're on a mac is uh really really important you said you have one on, on both sides and one of them's not working yeah the left hand one isn't working and that's what i use to edit the podcast so if it doesn't work i have to use the other hand and then it just it, is not great. It's a draw. It's your whole workflow. So right. you said you you've got your computer in at the at the shop. And they're working on that for you now. I uh, no, I have to take it tonight at six o'clock. <laughs> oh wow, you got a scheduled appointment. Okay. Oh yeah. boy. Well, I hope yep. you can get that that fixed soon. But talk to us a little bit about about wedding photography. And I know that you're right now you're focusing more on on portrait work, uh, but you have mm-hmm. photographed weddings. And I'm curious to get your take on maybe just two or three big ideas, things that you did on the wedding day to kind of help minimize stress, ultimately work more efficiently, make your job easier, and, and hopefully the life of, of your clients easier as well on their wedding day. Talk just a little bit about that. Yeah, most of my tips actually come from preparation. So nothing that we covered last week, but um, just little things like the first one was to bring an assistant. Um, and it depends on the wedding. Like I don't always um, bring an assistant to a wedding. If it's a really small one, I don't see a need for it, but for the larger ones where you're going to be on a larger property or you don't have a second shooter, um, having an assistant there that can help you with, you know, just the small tiny details of like, if the bride came out to her wedding portraits without her uh, bouquet or whatever the case may be, 
you don't have to rely on someone else to run and grab it. You can have your assistant go get it. Or if your batteries on your flash die, but they shouldn't, if you're using the ones we talked about the other day <laughs> that we talked a long time about. <laughs> it was a favorite topic from last week. If, if you all are listening in now and you haven't heard last week's Workflow Wednesday episode, it really was a great episode. Lots of very practical information. We did spend a little bit of time talking about batteries, yeah. more specifically yeah. rechargeable batteries. Yeah. I'm trying to pronounce the name of our rechargeable batteries. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, she did not want to go this topic again. She hit me underneath the table. She did not <laughs> want to... Okay, I, I so to anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, no. Haley, back to you. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. We'll keep moving. Yeah, so just like having someone there that is there for you, can help you with things, um, just really makes your day go a lot easier, which is turn makes your bride's day a lot smoother um or or your grooms either one whoever you're working with at the time um but that that was my first one is just having someone that can help you at all um all times of the wedding day i think there's a comment that came in there is a comment and i'm going to pop it up here mackenzie's actually sharing all kinds of fun information with us sorry rich and heather i'm canceling you out on the bottom of the screen again mackenzie's more important (laughs) <laughs> and uh, Mackenzie commented on a number of things. I'll go ahead and read this, but um, we'll get to the, the part about the assistant too. I always have a minute by minute schedule. I have my husband as an assistant. I always try to book a second shooter if the budget allows. And then beforehand to make sure I stay stress, stress-free, I use CBD oil for focus and put a piece of rose quartz as a worry stone in my pocket. Wow. I, we may actually have to have uh, Mackenzie on the on the show at some point and let her come uh, what in is, on what is a, Yeah, what is CBD oil? Cannabis. It's like, uh, yeah, it's hemp oil without the THC. Mm-hmm. Correct. Oh, yes. Yeah, so okay. it's it's all- non psychoactive. And that's, I mean, honestly, it's a loaded topic in and of itself. And I'm not yeah. going to try to even begin to comment on that at this point because, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, uh, well, again, it's a loaded topic in and of itself. Maybe we can save that for another episode. But it's, it certainly has um, its benefits when it comes to relaxation. I've personally used it before uh, to help with sleep, managing sleep. And, um, and and that's helpful in that way, but I'm sure in this case, it helps kind of minimize stress as well. And that's probably the benefit that she's seeing from that. Maybe Mackenzie, yeah. you can kind of confirm that in the comments. <laughs> I, um, I need something for focus. <laughs> I, yeah, seriously. Well, it, and she, she mentioned having her husband as an assistant. Haley, so I'm curious, when you talk about an assistant, I mean, this can mean so many different things. Are you hiring mm-hmm. somebody to come for an hour or two? Who is it? Are they also shooting? Break it down a little more detail for us. Yeah, so uh, for... For me, an assistant is someone who's not shooting. Um, If I have a second shooter, I I usually don't have an assistant with me just because that second shooter, if they're there for the whole day, um, I feel like it's just too many hands on uh, for one wedding. But uh, for a second shooter, like my husband second shoots with me quite often. Um, I haven't had a wedding in a while, but I have one this fall. And they didn't hire a second shooter. So I hired... um, or they didn't book a second shooter. So I hired an assistant to come with me for the day to just um, handle stuff. But she's also curious about getting into photography. So if time allows and we have the opportunity, I'll have a backup camera there for her to play with and, and see if she can kind of set up shots and all of that it gives her the opportunity to learn, but also working with me as an assistant. Um, so that's really the difference to me is one's, there to be shooting and the other is there as someone to help you out throughout the day. And, and are you high, are you paying an assistant a different hourly rate, say, than a photographer? Can you, do you mind sharing that information with us? Yeah. What? So my assistants make $18 an hour. Um, I haven't hired the second shooter. That's not my husband. So I don't <laughs> have a rate for it. <laughs> then I'll go through the same account, but the way I charge for a second shooter um, is usually the um, the bride will pay about fifty dollars an hour for the second shooter. Okay, so it, how does that? Um, it, we'll do things a little bit different today, Rich and Heather. How does that compare to your second shooter? Um, I guess policy. I know Heather, you've talked about coming along and, and photographing segments of the day with Rich. Mm-hmm. Rich, do you ever hire a second shooter or an assistant beyond just Heather? Um. Well, I have had second shooters. Um, I've never had an assistant before. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder how I, I've I've never really kind of I, I guess needed it. I, um, 
uh, I just do so much prep work before wedding that I, I just feel really, I don't know, I, I guess maybe my personality, but I, I sh- maybe I should be more stressed than I really am. <laughs> I, but I, I, I just go into a wedding not thinking anything's going to go wrong. I mean, like, uh, that's just my, yeah. I guess, my personality. And so um, I, I, I have shot so many weddings and I got my workflow um, so uh, uh, on on tap that I can, I know I know everything is, I'm ready, you know, I'm, I'm ready for this game. I'm ready for the game, you know, I've prepped for it. And, uh, and so, um, so Haley, I guess to that point, what is the, the big benefit that you see from having, cause I, I never personally had an assistant either. And I, I mean, it sounds awesome. Um, but what is the benefit that you saw from an assistant that you didn't, um, have, I guess when, when you didn't have an assistant there, was, was there a big difference in the experience? What was that like? Yeah. So oftentimes you'll use your second shooter to set up a shot. So if you have a diffuser or a reflector that you need them to hold or you need the dress fixed or whatever, it just makes your day go by so much faster because you're not asking a bridesmaid or, you know, a mother to do all the things that they shouldn't have to be doing on their wedding day. But if you don't have a second shooter, you can't ask your second shooter to do it. So having them there to take care of all those pieces, um, just allows you to really get the work done faster and more efficiently. But I mean, it it came to me one time when I was at a wedding and I needed someone to hold a reflector for me and I had to ask the videographer and he was just like, do you not have an assistant with you? And I was like, no. And I mean, he didn't either, but it was just one of those things. Like it kind of hit me at that moment. Maybe I should look into paying an assistant even if I like, I don't have a second shooter booked. So. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I actually had an experience as an assistant. It was more a lighting assistant. Actually. I worked with a local photographer, Barry Aislinger a number of years ago. He still shoots portraits, has a portrait studio, really, really great guy. One of the nicest photographers I've met in our industry. And, um, but he had me come along as a lighting and assist, a lighting assistant. And I did, I think maybe a little bit of second shooting as well, but my biggest job was just to follow him around with an off-camera light um, to give him that that extra light, which would be really, really nice too to have somebody like yeah. that. But this is a you're laughing, Rich. What's what's funny? Uh, we need an assistant to put more light on us right now. I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that storm is coming over our house right now. You know, yeah, like, that rain you talked about, I think, is yeah, on its way to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sorry. Sharing, thanks for sharing that <laughs> I feel like we're dark. Me. So uh, we got to apologize. We don't have this. We should have paid an assistant. Well, listen, Rich and I have had this conversation recently. Um, Some photographers, depending on the style of shooting, may or may not need an assistant. Like the style of photography that that Rich does, that we do, he's very quick on his feet. They're moving from location to location. He's not using he's not using off camera lighting until the reception. And so um, there are photographers who legitimately carry around external sources of light all day long to light their subject in different ways. And so those people, based on that style of photography, it's a slower moving process and you would definitely need more help. So I feel like different styles of photography would even warrant having an assistant more so than others. Um, Not that it wouldn't be helpful, but I'm typically there for the most critical part of the day, which we're gonna talk about in a couple minutes. and I guess we can just hold off on that for now. But that's that's a good point about an assistant. And when you talked about Barry and the external light, you know, yeah. that for us is not an issue all day until it gets dark. Um, and then we're that using some. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's okay. using some... Go ahead. Well, yeah. I was just going to say, it, it, Tasha actually chimed in, and and I I, I saying saying Tasha it, Tasha chimed in, and um, she was saying that she used to have a second shooter with her because there's some parts of the wedding where you need two points of view, which is kind of an interesting take. I've shot um, not very many weddings on my own, more with another photographer. Uh, but there's something that that's kind of cool about shooting a wedding on your own. It gives you extreme amounts of flexibility. I, I feel like when working with a second photographer, you're always having to keep in mind what the other person's doing and make sure that you send them to, to this place or that place. When it's just you, it's just you. And, and you get to focus on that. Uh, the drawback, of course, is that you don't have the backup camera, the backup perspective, as, as Tasha was pointing out. Um, so I, there are pros and cons to both, of the, uh, to, to I guess, all of these different ways that we're talking about going about photographing a wedding day. But I'm really loving this idea of an assistant, actually. <laughs> I may have to, the next wedding that, I, that I'm that i hired to shoot, I may have to have an assistant come oh, along. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, uh, several years ago, um, when I did uh, hire more second shooters, that wasn't my wife, um, uh, I would have them and uh, me 
wear like earpieces. And so like, no matter where they were, I could be like, Hey, where are you right now? Or I need you to do this. Or, you know, I could talk to them anywhere and everywhere. It was awesome. It was great. <laughs> yeah. With, with that, did you actually, were they using um, like radios or yeah. what, what, how were you yeah. actually communicating with those earpieces? Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was using a, a radio. So, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Old school stuff. But no, I, I, we totally used to, to use the same thing because it's easy to get lost on whatever property you might be on and, and not be able to get in touch with a person being able to do that right away with just inexpensive radios from Walmart or whatever is, is yeah. really, really nice. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, Tasha said, I, I, I just hate the first look whiplash and I totally know what you mean, <laughs> Tasha. It's yeah, that back I, and forth with the camera. Quick, quick, get that person out, get the other person. It is nice to have a second for that. Yeah. Nice. If I ever, like whenever I'm talking to a bride and I'm explaining the difference between having one shooter or two shooters, um, she, well, I, I keep saying bride, the couple, whoever I'm talking with. Um, I just talked to a bride the other day. So that's why it's like uh, fresh on my mind. <laughs> um, but whenever I'm talking to a couple, I explain, like, I'm only going to get one of your faces. So, like, guaranteed. Otherwise, if there's one person that you'd rather me get, <laughs> then let me know. But um, if you want both faces, a second shooter is going to be necessary. Because I, you can't guarantee that you're going to get it based on how they react. Or if they move their face a different way. Or their reaction is only a split second long and you can't get to it in time. So... Yeah. And that speaks, of course, to the importance of managing client expectations, giving them mm -hmm. the option uh, ahead of time, uh, helping them understand that the pros, there's not really a con so much as, as the, uh, I guess, just additional cost, but at least managing expectations by explaining the difference between having an individual versus more than one. That's good. Yeah. Haley, take us to the next one, though. I, I hate to kind of yeah. keep interrupting what you, your, your flow there. Go ahead and take us to the next one. The second one is... Um, just making sure that you get input on the timeline if there's a coordinator um, or a planner because I've had plenty of weddings where I wasn't involved and I got the timeline the day before and it was completely different from the timeline I had set up. Um, and so just making sure that you're giving yourself enough time plus giving yourself buffer room, um, that's going to make your day easier, your bride and groom's day easier, your your wedding planners say easier if they can understand where you're coming from. Because I think most planners now know that a photographer needs to see the, the timeline prior and give their input, but just making sure that you have the option to give all of your information that you need and make the timeline the best for your couple. Yeah. And there again, goes, it goes to, to proactive communication. Um, we were talking about interacting with a client, managing their expectations, but then in this case, it's just a matter of being proactive and reaching out to the coordinator. I think ahead of time, um, this is actually one of the points that I was going to make as well, but being, as you're saying, aware of the timeline, uh, giving input to it if necessary, but getting the timeline, the, even the day of, so you have the most up-to-date version. I'm actually photographing a wedding later this month and communicating with the bride at the moment. And, and uh, I'm getting, I think I have the third version of the timeline now um, <laughs> for, for that week. So making sure you have the most up-to-date version of that timeline is really important. And uh, that's really, really good. All right, take us to another one. Um, my third one is to, uh, and a lot of people don't agree with this one, but <laughs> <laughs> offer a discounted portrait session of just the bride and groom prior to the wedding so that if they decide to book it, you don't have to worry as much about getting bridal portraits, um, or, uh, portraits of the bride and groom or groom and groom, bride and bride, the couple, if you're not getting um, pictures of them the day of, it removes a lot of time from your timeline. Um, I always, whether I do it or not, make sure I do get portraits of them on that day, but you're not spending 30 minutes doing it. You can do it at another time. Um, I've also offered it as a freebie if the weather has just does not cooperate or mm -hmm. if something happens the day of. So I've had um, mothers who continued to nag to say, come on, let's get to the reception if they didn't do a first look or, and you just can't disappoint your mom on your wedding day. <laughs> so that's another thing is just offering up either a discounted or a free portrait session for your couple. Interesting. Now, so a couple of questions there. Uh, this is never something that I've done. So it's kind of an interesting idea. Is there a reason you're discounting the session and not just offering them like say a normal portrait session fee 
as an option and, and selling the benefit of, hey, we've got this, this focus time, whatever it is, an hour or two hours, you can get dedicated portraits and you don't have to worry about rushing that on, on the wedding day. What, what, is your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, part of it is you can price yourself however you want to price yourself and a discount is called a discount, whether it is or not. <laughs> um, but just offering it to them as like, I'm offering this to you as one of my couples um, because the day of your wedding, you may be super stressed, but here's what I would charge to someone who's not um, you know, a Haley Gaffin couple or whatever, you know, um, just offering it to them as an incentive of, I appreciate you using me for your wedding. Here is an extra because in the packages that I've built, I have like a solid package and then a la carte pricing options where they can add different things at discounted prices compared to what I normally would charge. So an engagement session, if it's, if they don't choose the package that has it for free, they can choose a discounted engagement session. Whereas someone who doesn't book me for their wedding can book me at a higher price for an engagement session. So it's just a, a benefit of using me. Okay. And how many clients have you had actually take you up on that? I've had two take me up on the, on free portraits um, just because either it rained on their wedding day or the one where the mom continued to push the, the couple into the reception. So that was after the fact then after the mm -hmm. actual wedding day that they came back and did that session. Yeah. And then okay. after those two incidents is when I started offering up the discounted bridal session. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rich and Heather, have you guys done anything like that before where you offer an additional session to supplement the portrait session on the wedding day? I only remember one time that um, we shot a wedding in which the, um, it rained. The weather was bad all day. Rich didn't have us. I actually did not shoot this wedding with Rich. He didn't have a single opportunity to get outside with the bride and groom. And that it was just, it was like a, um, like a last minute impromptu decision on his part to say, Hey, I, if you're not, they were not leaving town on their honeymoon that day or the next day. And it was at their, her parents' property. So it wasn't a venue they had to book. So Rich drove back oh, out there. Right. It was probably 10 minutes. It was probably 10 minutes away from our home. He drove back out there the next day for free. It was just complimentary. It was just, I think he just, he felt for the couple. He, and this was, I think the only time we've ever had to do anything like that. He went back out there and just did like a, like an hour long day after session for them. And they were so appreciative and, but it's not like something that we build into our client or into our contract or, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's no, we've had weddings, we've had brides run really, really late and um, take way too much time doing hair and makeup and then not be ready for first look photos or not be ready for family portraits or something before the wedding. And then it, it's time for the ceremony and he doesn't have a ton of time to work with the bride and groom after the ceremony. And that's really super unfortunate, but he did everything that he could to help that bride and groom plan for that plan, the timeline. And it just wasn't adhered to. And that's not, that's out of his control. And yeah. so they just simply end up with fewer photos and, and he does the best he can in the time frame that is allotted. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's just part of what, what we do. If people don't adhere to the timeline. You yeah, know. that's, that's actually a great point. And, and I guess it is relevant, but I want to make sure we also don't go too far down this rabbit hole, but I'm curious, how do yeah. you, how do you manage the those clients' expectations when it comes to the timeline of the wedding day and making sure that they actually have enough time for portraits? And I, this is actually something I'm going to comment on as well in my tips, but do you guys have a particular uh, approach to that? Uh, no, not, not I don't really talk to the to the bride and groom itself. I, I just move I just start moving a little bit faster. So um so normally um they would be getting um they would be getting more photos or we may go into more locations, but I, I'm, um, but because I don't have that much time and I know I don't have that much time, I just start, I just start just kind of like moving a little bit more, a little bit faster. So I, I still, I still, we go to fewer places. So there's no, there's not that time that, that to, from traveling from place to place. And I just, I get what I can during the time I can get. And uh, did I'm you only... mean before the wedding day, Nathan, did you mean what types of things do we do to educate our clients about the timeline beforehand? Or did you mean on the day of how we adapt to if things are running late? 
Yeah, more specifically how you're managing their expectations. Because if, if you go to, you know, for example, if, if a bride and groom sees your portfolio and they see these stunning, stunning portraits from mm -hmm. this beautiful location, mm -hmm. and in their mind, consciously or subconsciously, that's what they're expecting now. They go to the wedding day and they don't make time or they don't prioritize time to have those, those types of portraits photographed, mm -hmm. then they're not going to get the finished product that they expected that mm -hmm. they saw on your, your website. So I'm just curious if what you do to manage your expectations going into that saying, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll just go ahead and throw this out here since it's relevant to the conversation. One of the things that I was going to suggest um, and, and something that, that it was the type of conversation that I would have with our clients is to encourage the bride and groom to see each other prior to the wedding, do a first look and then give yourself, you know, whatever it is, an hour and a half for two hours for both portraits of the two of them, as well as the family and, and bridal party shots. Mm -hmm. So that then after the wedding, you're not rushed because, you know, Haley, you mm -hmm. commented on the mother earlier. I've had a wedding coordinator think yelling across the street at me and making a scene. I mean, we run into these situations where we're rushed after the ceremony and you've got 15 minutes, a half hour, whatever it is, before you go to the to the reception and then the portraits get rushed and then the client's not getting what they're expecting because they see these stunning portraits on the website. So I just didn't know if you guys are doing anything mm -hmm. proactively to manage their expectations going into mm -hmm. it, saying, hey, look, this is the kind of time that you need in order to get the kind of portraits that you're seeing on my website. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Before yeah, we, we definitely educate them, especially about the uh, about the how like <laughs> uh, doing or not doing a first look is one of the, the most major Things you can uh, decisions they can make on, on a wedding day mm -hmm. uh, that will majorly affect their timeline, mm -hmm. and uh, and so basically I just say hey this is um, the, uh, doing doing a first look or not doing a first look or not seeing each other for the um, before the wedding it tends to be an a an emotional decision uh, so basically I just say hey let let me tell you everything from my perspective so that y'all can make an informed decision instead of an emotional decision. If you still want to make that, 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 um, if you still guys, if you don't want to look at each other before the wedding, at least y'all understand that if y'all make the decision, you will have less photos of you guys on the wedding day. I mean, like basically, you know, um, so, uh, for, for the most part, um, and, and, I feel like we could do a whole episode on oh, yeah. first look, like could, oh, we yeah. could go down this trail and talk about this for uh, seriously, I would think oh, between yeah. the four of us, a full hour, maybe we should do that sometime yeah, yeah. because <laughs> there, there's a lot to unpack in what he just said, all the ways yeah. in which he educates our clients, you know, during the potential client meeting and after the fact, wait well before the wedding so that they're very informed and the clients who choose not to have a first look are very informed about the implications, what that's going to mean. So yes. Oh yeah. We, we definitely yeah. educate them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We might have to actually, in fact, I'll, I'll make note to, to maybe set up a, we'll, we'll do a separate episode just talking about that first look and how we then capture the portraits and what that workflow looks like. We're speaking mm -hmm. in a more kind of general sense today about how to go about photographing the wedding day efficiently that sounds like a, a cool topic we could actually delve into another oh, yeah. another episode. But I appreciate you commenting on that. Haley, we keep interrupting your flow. Do you have yeah. anything that you want to add to kind of tag on to the end of, of your tips? Yeah, it's it's not really a great tip, but just don't show if you're stressed on the wedding day because the way you're acting will reflect in the bride and the groom and you know the wedding party itself. Everyone's going to feel what you're feeling. And if you're showing it, you're going to create a lot more stress on everyone else when there doesn't necessarily need to be because the couple is already stressing enough throughout the day. Um, so that's really my only tip. I don't have a way to tell you how to not show it, but, <laughs> but yeah, just try to not <laughs> show your stress. It, no, it's, it's, it's a great point actually. And, and again, this goes back to what we were talking about last week too, when it comes to, to managing what we eat on, on the wedding day is it, can you hear the cat in the background? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we saw the cat jump, jump up on the table behind you a second ago. So. I didn't know whose house the cat was at because we all have a cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. I didn't, I yeah. didn't realize you were able no, to see all the background. Okay. okay. We're going to, we're going to tilt up just a little bit here. No, no, that's okay. Um, that is okay. We love cats. That's fine. <laughs> but what I was going to say, though, is it's it's important to remember that we're there to do a job and, and to focus on taking care of the client and and letting kind of wearing our stress on our sleeve uh, is ultimately making it more about us. Um, we need to be focusing on taking care of the client. And, and so I think that's actually a great tip and something for our listeners to keep in mind. Rich and Heather, let's go to you. We've got about 23 minutes or so left here. Yeah, okay, um, let's yeah, do this. Yeah, I'll, let's, I'll, 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 I want to talk about what her last point was. I I, I literally... I uh, tell my class the exact same thing. I, I basically say, hey, on your wedding day, that if things go wrong, no, um, I, I, uh, I basically say, 
just let anything that goes wrong kind of like just water off a duck's back. I mean, like just just did, did, let it not bother you because again, in one week, Haley's, I, Haley's laughing there. That's definitely not an analogy that we hear very often anymore, Rich. Thanks for bringing oh that back for us, though. What the heck was that? What, what, oh, Haley's too young to even have heard it. Just, it. Oh, I have not heard that before. It just water off a duck's back. It just slides off. It doesn't stick. Oh, it doesn't, you know, oh, oh, okay. Okay, oh. wow. So we need to explain the analogy now. So oh for my the, goodness. Oh boy. What is happening here? I, 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 thought, that. That, I thought that was a very common expression. <laughs> wow, I use that to, with my clients all the time. Maybe they're like, what? They're is like, the, what the heck is he what? talking about? No. Okay, so okay. Well, ducks, have, du ducks produce a natural oil, which essentially helps keep their feathers waterproof. Oh. And so if you ever see a duck duck underwater and then come back up out of the water, you'll see the water literally just run right off its back almost as though the water never touched it. Yeah, it and beads up that's... because of the oil and just, yeah, yeah runs yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Now I have to start using this phrase. <laughs> like, oh, water wow. off, like water off a duck's back. Like water off a duck's back. But water but water under the really bridge. Good advice. It is uh, good advice because someone told me something very similar right before I got married. And it, it felt like everything that could have went wrong on the day of my wedding went wrong, but it was just, eh, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Have talk to so and so; they'll fix it. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I basically, I basically tell my clients, "Hey, um, that like uh, a week for, after your wedding, whatever it went wrong will have, make no difference whatsoever. If, if the if the the wedding plan, if the the florist mm -hmm. running late, or if the the cake did something, you know, mm -hmm. it, like like a week after your wedding, it does not matter at all. What's going to matter is your photos. And I don't want to be taking a lot of photos of you clenching your jaw and and being really stressed. So just like whatever <laughs> happens." This happens, you know, and yeah. I want you to enjoy your wedding day. And I, and I tell them as much as possible, hey, I've got this. I'm a professional. I will take care of anything. And I and, I, and if anything's making you stressed, I'm going to, mm -hmm. if there's not a wedding planner, because normally if there's a wedding planner, I, she, she, she's like the gatekeeper, you know, she, she, she any, right. anything that will stress the bride out hits the, the wedding planner first. But normally, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can get, pretty, I'm really easy going, but if something stresses my bride out, I will take control. I will, I will do it okay. because, because I'm, I got to take photos of, of the bride and groom. I want them to have lots, a lot, a lot of fun, you mm -hmm. know, I want them to just be smiles, enjoying themselves, not, not like sitting back uh, quiet and, and brooding or, or, or whatnot, you know, and, uh, or yelling, uh, that, that, that is, that's happened before. I don't, I don't want that to happen, you know? So anyway, that's a great, that's actually a great tip, Haley. Water off a of duck's back. That's going to be the, the hashtag for today's episode. I think Boom. that'll be good. Oh, that was good. Hey, Haley, by the way, you. thank you for, for sharing your tips and, and Rich and Heather, let's go to you guys. And, okay. and, um, I, I want to hear what, what your thoughts are on this topic. How do you photograph a, a wedding day more efficiently? Yeah. Um, it, um, it's a it's an ongoing process. The more weddings that you shoot, uh, especially as you become more and more seasoned as a, as a photographer, you will spot things all the time that you're like, oh man, I wish the client had done this. I wish they had known this. I, mm -hmm. And so, literally throughout the a wedding day, if this and it still happens to me almost every single wedding, I will take out my phone and I'll make a note. And that and that in that note, um, I'll either. Uh, send. Uh, I'll add that to my emails that that um, that will automatically be sent to my clients. Um, and so, so, so uh, I have a whole series of emails based upon real experience from past past weddings that that basically allows uh, to, to basically educate my clients that they can maximize the amount of really great photos they receive for their wedding day. So, uh, and so. And so, uh, yeah, I, I literally, I'm, I'm making, I'm making notes throughout the wedding day. So, um, um, because I'm like, oh man, uh, she spent like, you spent so much money on this wedding, and you, you, you are, uh, your, your bride, your, your bridesmaids are getting ready in this very dark, very ugly location. You know, like I'm taking these photos, and it's, and it's not bright, it's not airy, and doesn't match what your wedding's like, you know, like, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. and so I'm just like, just think through all, uh, all those things, you know? So that's just one example. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, but you're constantly taking notes and, and mm -hmm. keeping an eye on, on things that, that are advice ultimately that you can give to future clients. That's really, really good. Yeah. But give us some of that advice. What are some of those, those tips, those things that you're keeping in mind to try to make it as easy as possible, not only for the client, but also for you, the photographer. Oh, there's a lot. Oh my goodness. Uh, there's uh, a lot. No gum. Do not chew gum. <laughs> you actually mentioned that last week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I mean, one of the one of the things that there's so many. Seriously, this could be a whole episode too. But one of the things that we commonly see uh, or were seeing before is that the bride would be, you know, how the bridesmaids and the mom might like to help the bride get into her wedding dress. Um, and those can be some really beautiful and emotional photos. But if the bridesmaids are wearing sweats or mm -hmm. they're not ready yet, that can really it, it can really put a damper on the on the beauty of the photos. And so we've had the we have the bridesmaids get ready and it be ready so that when the bride is getting ready, they're all around her and th that makes for much more beautiful photos. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times when bridesmaids and groomsmen uh, are walking down the aisle and all eyes are on them during when the ceremony has started, there's a tendency for people who feel uncomfortable or awkward or a little bit shy to actually look down. And so they're like looking down, walking down the aisle and with in his, all with, of our photos. With, with very serious faces. You're yeah. Like, yeah. Look, so look, just fake it, it's fake funny it. how saying simple things and educating your clients about simple things. There's again, there's there's a long list of, of these types of things. Yeah, but. red solo cups, bane of my existence. I hate <laughs> red solo cups. They're like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, get get the get the clear plastic uh, um, champagne glasses. I mean, like, or or any, <laughs> anything except the red solo cups. Don't use the red solo cups. Yeah, man. All right, but you, know. you guys, you guys have thrown out all kinds of uh, different tidbits here, and 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 certainly helpful tips. But break it down to us: one, two, three, four. Give us really specific tips, things that our listeners can walk away with that they can go take to their next wedding day. Uh, oh, do you mean to continue on with our with our advice, or did yeah, you want us? Absolutely. To... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. I misunderstood. Sorry, apologize. What you... Apologize. So uh, we're back on the same page. All right. Water for ducks back. All right. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I so, misunderstood so, your last. So uh, so um, another thing that helps me uh, stay stress free is to create um, um, a checklist. So basically. On a wedding, um, I have literally had my, my wife had to come like bring me something because I forgot about it, and so that immediately is added to like a checklist. And so, so I and so so literally, I have a checklist, so uh, I know that I did not leave those extra battery camera batteries plugged into mm -hmm. into the wall still. You know, like mm -hmm. that has happened before. You know, so like I make a mistake. I make uh, I make a, a put, I make a note put on my list you know so a, each wedding I am more and more confident that when I follow this checklist everything's going to run much, way more smoothly mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so um, what when that checklist do you have is this something that you're also constantly updating and do you keep it on yeah. your phone or your watch or where do you keep that checklist um, yeah so my phone I don't, psh, paper <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> hey ask Haley Haley likes paper. Uh, I'm moving though. I, well, the only time I use paper now is to take notes. And all I have written down today is water off ducks back as a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad someone got something out of this, you know? <laughs> wow. Uh, we're learning. Way, um, Lynn, Lynn chimed in and she said the aisle look down quote unquote is so real. So, so real. Um, it, she can also relate to that, to that idea. I just wanted to make sure that we acknowledged her comments and she was laughing at the notion of gum too. Um, yes. yeah, gum, especially for clients. Uh, although I have to say that gum is better than having a bride who is stoned and whose eyes are halfway closed for the portrait session. That was an experience uh -oh. that I had. Not so great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. Um, and I educate my, my clients even on that as well. Don't you know? get stoned on your wedding day. Well, 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 I mean, or, or especially the night before where they're having a rehearsal dinner. So don't get like, you have a hangover. Their hangovers are real, you know? Like, uh, and so, I mean, like I've literally had, had brought on um, groomsmen. They, they're like, they feel sick. They, they're, you know, the, all of them, they're, they drank so much the night before. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm taking photos of these guys, you know, and like they, they don't look like they're happy. They look like they're about to throw up, you know, I'm like, <laughs> are, are, are they complaining about a headache? They're, they're not yeah. having fun. You know, um, they're, they're, I, I, was like, I was like, I'm like, Hey, know your limits at the reception, go crazy. If you want to, but before then just, you know, drink lots of water, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, I don't want you to get sick. So, yeah. so All right, yeah. but I, I didn't mean to, to send us down another rabbit. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it was your, your fault. fault. It was your fault this time. Buddy. So we, we got the, the checklist, okay. which actually is a really great idea. And that checklist you said is something that you can just reference on your phone um, yeah. but prior to the wedding day. And then even while you're there at the wedding day. So having the automated emails to mm -hmm. educate our clients before the wedding day, having a checklist. Yes. That, that update again, because on my phone, it's mm -hmm. not a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. I can, I can, again, I add more things to it mm -hmm. uh, um, okay. along the way. So, yeah. 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 I also create, a, um, also, um, uh, 
let's see here. Let's see here. What do I do? I'd create a timeline. I help, I help create a timeline. Look at that. <laughs> I um, and so uh, so a, a huge one is again like uh, well I have my hand as much in that timeline as possible. Like again, if, if I can uh, if I can create a timeline, I know because there's been times where like uh, the bride is like I want this. Um, documented. I want this documented. I want this documented. And then they, and then I look at the timeline. And I see that I have 15 minutes to document all these things. And I'm like, I'm like, Hey, something's got to give here, you know? So, uh, because I, 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 you want all these things, but I don't have time physically to, to get these things. So, so either, either I need to come earlier, like you pay me to come earlier or we can, um, we need to, um, uh, uh, move things around on your timeline. We got to figure this out. Out. So, so basically, I um, I make sure that the timeline matches what I can actually do, and um, and so mm -hmm. and, and and that really really works as well. So yeah, and and of course we mentioned this earlier, but the, the significance of managing clients' expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, again, when they're seeing pictures on your website, they're expecting you to be able to deliver that. Mm -hmm. Being aware of what the timeline, at least the initial timeline, is, and then communicating with them about. What is possible within that timeline is really, really important. Um, managing expectations so huge, so huge, and really so much of so much of this process of managing the, the photography for a wedding day efficiently comes down to communication. I mean, that's mm -hmm. been kind of a theme throughout, so that's really important. But uh, back to you, Rich. And Heather. okay, so this is the most ex the most important one because it involves <laughs> Heather. You want to talk about this? You want to talk about this? We have found that uh, on wedding days. Client, and this actually plays into what we were talking about before with managing clients' expectations is that Rich is able to do his job best when I come as a second shooter to, um, now we do have our clients hire me by the hour and so they can choose how long or short they want me there. But the most critical part of the day we have found in, in really documenting a wedding well is to have me show up around the time the ceremony starts and I'll help photograph a portion of the ceremony, but then I will leave before the ceremony's over and I'll go to the reception site. It's sometimes on location. Sometimes I get in my car and drive and I will document the reception area, including all the details, everything that's there before it's uh, before the guests arrive. So it's untouched. It's, it's now set up by, by all the vendors. It's ready now. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause it's, you know, it's midway through the ceremony. So it's done and it's ready, but it's undisturbed. And so I can go and I can get all the detail shots. And, and we have an understanding at this point in our, in our business that I, I'm experienced in doing that. And that frees Rich up to relax to not feel like he has to come behind me and get the detail shots. Rush, rush. I got to rush. I and he's able to shots. relax and do everything that he needs to do, capturing mm -hmm. moments because that's his passion anyway. Mm -hmm. And I love taking the detail shots. So we just work really well as a team because I'm able to take that load off of his shoulders and free him up to do what he's so good at. And he doesn't have to worry about coming along behind me. So um, having a second shooter for at least critical portions of the day has been really, really important for us. We d we have not found that it's been important for me to be there all day long. Um, if a client hires me for all day long and wants me there all day, that's fine. But Rich has enough experience at this point to get all the money shots, mm -hmm. to get all the safe shots, to capture the moments. And as long as I'm taking care of those details... Um, then he's freed up to do his thing and I've taken him, you know, so that's been a huge one for us. To that, to that point, just a really quick question. You talk about being able to photograph most of the wedding day yourself. Do, mm -hmm. do your clients ever seem to miss uh, having an individual photographer with the bride during prep and the groom during prep simultaneously? Rich, how do you manage going back and forth? I've, I've never done that. I mean, like uh, where, uh, where, uh, I basically again set expectations. So so um, so when I have most of the time, uh, the bride, uh, at least my clients, getting photos of the groom getting ready is not that important to them. Or uh, what I what I normally do is if they're getting ready in the same location, basically I have control of the timeline. So basically when I when the bride bridesmaids are getting dressed. I leave, I go to where the groom is. I told him, I have him, I know that he's already um, in his pants, uh, has a t-shirt on. I just basically get a photo of him putting on a shirt, um, putting on his tie, his cufflinks, um, putting his jacket on, mm -hmm. boom, got some great photos of, of, the, of the guys kind of getting ready behind him. I kind of said that, um, you know, and then and then by that time, I, I just head back out get um, mm -hmm. then uh, and go back to the bride where she is um, she's getting ready as well so she's about to put on her dress so again I, I, I kind of I've mm -hmm. uh, because I have 
um, I, I just don't get as many photos. I've never, ever had a complaint of, mm-hmm. of like, oh, um, I, yeah. I wish because. Um, and if the bride and groom are getting ready at separate locations and if having photos of both the groomsmen and the bridesmaids getting ready, um, having that thoroughly covered is important to them, then they can just hire me and we can do that. Mm-hmm. But it just it's not it's not he you know, Rich talks with our clients about that. So. Or, or basically I could fake it as well. So you say they, he's, he mm-hmm. can be fully ready. He comes into the venue. I just I, I, I pull him aside. Tell them, yeah. tell them like, hey, loosen up your tie and then tighten back up again and, and just fool with your, your cufflinks. And like, I'll, I'll grab some fake getting ready for shots. It really takes me five minutes. No big deal. Yeah, there's and, several uh, and, options and, here. And so, but, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I know kind of like the ebb and flow. I know uh, how to kind of mm-hmm. like cover the wedding. And I'm, I've never had a complaint from, from a bride saying, um, mm-hmm. I wish this was covered more. I mean, she may. The guys get dressed yeah. and ready so fast yeah. anyway that it's like a it's like a five or ten minute ordeal. Yeah. Now, if they're off site doing something really super cool mm. and they want that covered, then Rich will hire a second shooter for that, or or they'll hire me for that. You know, mm-hmm. um, and we can obviously cover that. We can accommodate that. But more often than not, mm-hmm. it they're on the same location. They're in the same location, and Rich is able to go back and forth. You know, pretty easily. Yeah. So. And yep. and for those who haven't listened to the past episodes, you guys charge an hourly rate for. Mm-hmm. You as a second shooter, Heather, yes. is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they're able to just purchase that a la carte. And, yep. um, yep. and then you assign those hours or they they purchase that a la carte service based on where they want the second photographer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And our last. And, yeah. Casey, Casey Jean just uh, commented again. And sorry, Rich and Heather, I'm, I'm hiding you guys on screen again. But uh, okay. she said, <laughs> love having a second shooter makes it so great for getting ready shots so we can uh, separately be with the bride and groom. I also put my second in charge of getting all the candidates and group shots of all the guests and I'm in charge of the bride, groom and wedding party, mm-hmm. uh, which is also very nice. I remember um, Joe Busig, for those of you who've not been in the industry for a while, Joe um, was a, a wedding photojournalist um, kind of back in the days of Dennis Reggie and those who were making the idea of wedding photojournalism more popular, was also a celebrity wedding photographer. And Joe actually hired a so-called second photographer to be the primary photographer. And he focused on the candidates because that's what he enjoyed mm-hmm. doing. And of course, that's mm-hmm. your prerogative um, as right. a photography business owner. So it's something to to possibly consider as well. Rich and Heather, as, as we're kind of getting close to end time here, do you guys have any other thoughts to add to that um, before I share a few of mine? Um, no, you, no, you go ahead. Go for it. Okay. Well, Wait. don't hesitate to chime in because I'm, I'm, I know that some of these things that we're saying are kind of overlapping. I don't think that's a bad thing, especially for those photographers listening in who are, are relatively new to the wedding photography scene or trying to kind of put mm-hmm. their whole, whole workflow together. Uh, but I'm just going to throw a few of these out um, very quickly. And we mentioned last week, the, f- the first one I'm, I'm going to mention is um, the, the questionnaire. Rich alluded to this as well. This is something that we talked about in last week's Workflow Wednesday. But the importance of not only a questionnaire, but extremely detailed questionnaire. And I mentioned this last week, but mine is, I think, roughly or it's close to four pages long. And so I'm getting lots and lots of information. So I'm well aware of the, the timeline, uh, the sensitive family situations, um, you know, people that you need to avoid putting together during portraits, for example, uh, but a very detailed questionnaire, being aware of the vendors and the wedding coordinator and the videographer and what the reception is going to be like, the ceremony, if there's special traditions that are going to be implemented, all those kinds of things so that you're well aware as the, as the photographer going into that day, what you're photographing, what details to be aware of. It just is, it's, again, it's a matter of communication and doing so proactively with the bride and groom prior to the wedding, so, so important. Uh, number two, and, and again, we spoke to this already, but I'll mention it again, encourage the bride and groom to see each other before the wedding ceremony to maximize time for couples portraits and minimize rushing around after the fact. And, and again, I said this earlier, but uh, this, the number of times that I ended up having to rush the bride and groom's portraits you know, in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, People are rushing them, encouraging them to get to, or even yelling for them to get to the reception. Uh, That was just not a fun situation to be in. If we're talking about minimizing stress, as Rich alluded to, managing the client's expectations proactively, communicating in great detail, helping them feel the potential pain of not seeing each other beforehand and what that can translate to with the portraits is really, really important. And uh, I think it's, I think being proactive in that regard uh, will really help minimize stress on the wedding day for you as the photographer, also for the client as well. Um, something that I used to do when I when I get on location, to, whether you have rain coming along or it just gets to be too hot. I know one day we were photographing, it was so, so hot, 
Chattanooga, Tennessee weather, not only hot, but also extremely humid. And uh, we ended up shooting the portraits indoors. So being aware of not only outdoor, but indoor portrait locations that are beautiful, that are going to be great for pictures, being aware of those ahead of time so that when it comes time for the portraits, you can very quickly move to those locations as needed. That's another thing to keep in mind. Um, this is another one that we would I would mention to clients, but when it's time for the portraits to happen, it's quite natural and there's no reason to get upset about it. It's quite natural for people to be standing around, family, friends, et cetera, with their cameras or their phones trying to capture pictures. It's just gonna happen. You can't be mad at it, but proactively managing it is important and communicating with the bride and groom about the importance of actually paying attention to your camera. Make them aware of the fact this is gonna happen. During the portraits, I need you to, to pay attention to my camera. They can get pictures later on or they can get pictures as we're taking, as I'm taking mine, but pay attention to my camera. It's really, really important too. So that's just another little tidbit. Um, coordinating with the wedding planner. Again, this is something that Rich mentioned earlier, but this is really, really important to proactively communicate with the, and actually Haley talked about this, um, coordinating with the, the wedding coordinator, wedding planner, as far as the timeline is concerned, um, making sure that you're aware of the timeline that the coordinator has, making suggestions if necessary for the sake of that timeline, and then making sure you have something up to date, especially on the day of, really, really important. Um, also, if, if possible, if there's a wedding coordinator or a wedding planner there, um, taking advantage of them to help corral family uh, in preparation for family portraits, and then even queuing them if possible. If you don't have a second there and an assistant there with you, help helping cue the next family member on that list. You can literally hand that to the wedding coordinator and say, this is the list they've requested. Can you help me get these people together? And and I've, I've had, we used to work with a, t a wedding coordinator here named Taylor. Taylor would, Taylor stood there and literally cued the next family member um, that was on that list so that we could just fly right through those family portrait sessions. If you don't have an assistant or a second shooter to help you with that, see if you can take advantage of the wedding coordinator for something or for, for help with that particular scenario it makes a big, big difference. And the last thing that I'll mention very quickly, and I know we need to close here, but um, is to chat with the DJ at the beginning of the reception to make sure that you're on the same page with the timeline again. And as I said earlier, it's really all about communication. This helps minimize stress and maximize efficiency on the wedding day, but make sure you talk with the DJ that you're on the same page that you know when the, the announcement of the bride and groom of the wedding party is coming up, when the first dance is, when the cake cutting is going to happen, when that stuff's actually going to happen. Because that, that detailed timeline that the coordinator has come up with isn't necessarily being paid attention to by the DJ or there may have been a misunderstanding. Um, so make sure that you're on the same timeline with the DJ so you don't miss anything. So there's nothing there that's a surprise. Uh, that's the last tip that I will throw out. Do you guys have anything to add to that uh, or to comment on any of those points? Um, no, I mean, like the DJ definitely thing is, is good. Sometimes I ask the DJ to turn off because uh, a really popular thing nowadays is for DJs. I'm not sure if you've experienced this um, yet, Nathan, but uh, they, they put on the, this, uh, this, little, this, these laser uh, um, uh, lights now that actually makes little pin points on, on people's uh, skin. And even with a flash, it's still it's, because they're lasers, it's really, really bright. Like it's, it looks like people are sick with like, like a really weird <laughs> measles weird measles you know? and uh, <laughs> i'm like awful. i'm like and i'm like what and so uh so regular lights is great uh laser stuff is bad you know um oh i we uh, i had this one wedding where they uh uh the bride and groom i know the bride had their has her, her first dance with her dad the 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 dj put a black light on them and i'm like i'm like what is happening here i it looked Horrible. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, that's that's black and white, black and white. <laughs> exactly, black guy. There, there you go. There you go. Nice. Um, and Lynn actually asked. Or she, Lynn said, "I have a questionnaire already, but would you mind swapping yours, Nathan, with the viewers?" Um, I will work on that, Lynn. Um, at the old format. I don't know if I actually have the original Word document. I, I need to go back and look and see. I may and, have. Uh, <laughs> and see if I can prep that, um, and and we'll make that available for download. If not. By this evening, um, certainly later in the week, we'll put it in the show notes for this particular episode of Workflow Wednesday, um, photographing the wedding with minimal stress. And uh, so we'll, we'll add that in there. But um, I appreciate Rich and Heather, Haley, I, thanks for, for chiming in on this topic. And I know we were kind of all over the place today, yeah, um, but I think, I think we made it happen in the end. So it, it's good. <laughs> Water for, uh, that's funny, buddy. for those of you listening in again, just very quickly, if, if you are, first of all, if you're watching live Facebook live, you can hear this later on on bocapodcast.com. Just go to bocapodcast.com for both the episodes and the show notes, links to podcast players, 
You can also follow us on Instagram, Boca Podcast. And then for those of you listening on the podcast, um, you can go to facebook.com slash photogs edit, P-H-O-T-O-G-S-E-D-I-T. And you can see these videos as well, especially for the episodes where there's a bit of show and tell going on. So um, thank you guys so much for listening in, chiming in. For those of you who commented today, and thank you again, Haley and Heather and Rich. Hope you guys have a great Wednesday. You too. All right, bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Boca Podcast. Will you let us know what you thought by leaving a review of the podcast in iTunes or the Apple Podcast app? And I'd love to hear from you personally with your thoughts about the podcast and maybe suggestions about future topics and guests for the show. My email is nathan at photographersedit.com. The Boca Podcast is brought to you by Photographers Edit, custom image editing for the wedding and portrait photographer. Visit photographersedit.com.